And we're live. It is the first ever episode of Beyond Sports, and I am beyond happy today to recognize Western Michigan assistant coach, former Michigan State Spartan player, went to a Final Four, and a very, very good pro career as well, Thomas Kelly. TK, how you doing, man? I'm all good, man. I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing, man? I'm doing okay. What's life like for you right now with everything going on? Right now, sitting in front of computer screens, text messages, all of that, watching, watching, uh, watching games when I can. I mean, literally doing that type of stuff a lot. <laughs> literally. <laughs> what are you guys able to do right now? Because I don't think talking across the nation, people really know. What are people doing right now who are college assistant coaches? I should got to be doing the same things I'm doing. I mean, because uh, we're not allowed to be on the road recruiting because of the dead period, you know, NCAA yeah. extended that. So we're not allowed to do much or nothing. Just, you know, like I said, watch stuff online, you know, try to reach out to people that way. You know, uh, like I said, you know, have a lot of Zoom calls, yeah. a whole lot of Zoom calls. So it's like, shoot, that's pretty much, that's pretty much your life, man. What are the student athletes doing right now? Well, I will hope that they are uh, getting good workouts in the best way they can because some, you know, depending on where you're from, where you live in, you know, some guys can get access to a gym. Some guys can't. Some guys got to work out outside. Some guys got to, you know, so, you know, they got to they gotta be creative. So I hope they be creative, been, been creative, you know what I'm saying, this whole summer. What do you recommend to the guys, the players who are on your team right now when they call you and text you and talk about what should I be doing, coach? What do you say to them right now? Well, so my thing is because even with me, <laughs> me and head coach base, we laugh about this a lot because it's like, I don't like to sit still, Aaron, man. I don't like yeah. to sit still. You know what I mean? You know, because I just think you're unproductive that way. And so I tell my guys, man, all activity is good activity. When I'm talking about like, if you're going to get out and go run, like, you know, try to get a mile in a day, two miles in, whatever you can do, get out and run. Hey, you got to take it back to the 80s and 90s where, especially in the 80s when I grew up, Time to play outside if you got to play outside, if that's the case, maybe. I mean, shoot, because I still play. My knees hurting right now, Aaron, because I still yeah. play outside. <laughs> How often do you play? I, yeah, I play, I play when I can, when I get a break or two, when I try to get, you know, get some time away. I try to play as much as I can. But so I just try to tell them to stay, you know, be creative, you know, do things, man. If it's at home, if it's at the park, if you can get into a gym, be active. People, when they see me, They'll always, the first thing they'll ask, and I have to ask you, and I'm sure maybe you don't know, will there be a season? I have to ask, TK, yeah. do you have any idea right now? Man, honestly, I do not know nothing. I'm literally just playing it by ear, like, you know, and the, the words that they say, winging it, like I'm winging it right now because I, I really don't know. I mean, it's over my head. I mean, of course, I want, I want to play. I mean, I want to play just, you know, it's my passion. It's what I want to do, but health matters people you know all that stuff matters and i don't want you know i don't want to risk anybody like that especially our student athletes mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so is it whatever we can if we can get this thing under control let's do it but if not you know we got we got to factor in student athletes and the families and all of that you know so i'm where i'm more concerned about that is there a timetable right now at western michigan of when you think you might get things going no nah, i mean well for me right now i haven't i haven't heard anything like that i mean so i'm, I'm waiting to hear too you know, I mean, I know we're going to try to schedule things as normal as far as enrolling, you know, when kids get back and all of that. But, you know, I, as far as what's going to happen, I do not know. When would it normally start if there were no pandemic? Uh, I think our guys get back like the end of August. I would think like August 30th is when they start. Yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. It's a brand new era at yeah. Western Michigan University. Steve Hawkins, we all loved him. Fantastic yeah, guy. Classic, Clayton Bates man. has been his top assistant for a long time. Right. It's now his job right now. Take right. us back to that time. First of all, they decided not to renew Steve Hawkins' contract. Mm -hmm. What were you thinking right then as a person when you didn't know where you'd be? Hey, I, just that right there. I honestly didn't know where I would be. I mean, because even honestly, you you speak with this uh, with this COVID stuff, with this pandemic, you never knew what Will Hawk was going to do, if he was going to stick around, if he was leaving, where they, you know, and then, uh, you know, where, you know, you know, and they did a great job with Kathy and Jeff, you know, I didn't know where they were going. So it was like, she was like, man, 
what do I do? You know, I gotta, I gotta find a job. I gotta do something. What do I do? Because of course, blessing. I, you know, I want to stay out western. I want to, I want to, you know, finish what I start here. You know, I want to get this thing back going. So that all lined up right. But in the beginning, I didn't know. I didn't. I have a clue. We was all in the dark. Right. Until until all this happened, you know. What did you think the day where you heard that Coach Hawkins was not going to be back? Oh man, I mean. When you when you think of that, you're just like wow, like you because you know Hawk is a pillar. You know when I say you know Hawk is you know he's Bronco basketball. You know Hawk is you know he put he put his time in. You know his family and all of that. So I've always respect. I always I've always watched Hawk from afar. I've I've known C Bates from afar. I always I tell C Bates I always watched off from afar because I'm a basketball junkie. You never know. But it's like you know I know how long they've been a part of this, so you just don't you don't think that because you know it's like like a Tom Izzo in a lot of ways. Like Coach Izzo been at Michigan State for twenty plus years. Hawk has almost been at Western for 20, 20 years. Yeah. So you just don't think you know stuff like that would happen to things you know. But things change, people move on, whatever the case may be. So, but yeah, it was it was it was kind of, it was a crazy time. Coach Hawkins was he treated me as well as anybody could have possibly treated me. Everybody with pure respect, what were your experiences with him over the years? Oh, it was cool. I mean, from the interview, from the phone conversations, I mean, Hawk was, Hawk was, Hawk was, it was cool. I mean, especially when you're coming from, you know, like uh, the way Hawk was, you know, Hawk a people person to me, you know, he, you know, where, you know, uh, which Coach Izzo was too, but the, the intense level, you know, coming from Coach Izzo to I'm used to this way, then, to Hawk being this way, and I was just like, man, like you know, you know, is this real? You know, like Hawk, how Hawk was just, you know, kind of, you know, which I love. He's like, you know, like let me go. You know, like, you know, you gonna grow. You know, I'm with you when you bump your head, like you do a kid, for example. You know, but I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna give you a leash and let you go and let you grow. And I appreciate Hawk for that. Clayton you know? Bates, he's now the head coach of Western Michigan. How do you think he might run things? Uh I mean, see, bases. You know, with his background, especially being a uh, you know a Lon Kruger guy, because you know right. I played I played against Lon Kruger in college too. I mean, with all the experience he got, what he has, you know, I think C. Bates is going. You know, even what he's doing with us now, because so far, even in, at this time, being C. Bates has been great, communicating, talking, being on top of things. I mean, you know, and C. Bates, you know, he, you know, he, he, he know, the order, he likes things, you know, he, he's a neat, you know, he's a neat freak type of guy too. I, I'm a jab at him for that. <laughs> but I love Coach, I mean, Coach Bates is what he's doing and how he's going about things right now. Man, it's been great, man. I think he's going to do a great job. When he first got the job, obviously, it was a rough time just for everybody because you couldn't interview anybody in person. Right. You can't talk to players in person. No. He had a lot of roster places to fill how did you guys as a staff do it and get a class in so quickly that's all i mean that's what i'm saying i mean i mean well with c bates he he's hungry he like i said he can't sit there. he's hungry and he likes to work so he he put that in us and 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 honestly jake and myself and I, we like to work joe we like to work so you know he you know he, he stuck with us on when he gave me that call and you know we talked about the job and all of that I mean, it was a no-brainer for me, but I already knew I, I felt his energy through the phone. You know, I knew what it was about, what he was, what he was trying to do. So as soon as we got the job, as soon as things was okay, Airman, we hit the we hit the floor running, hustling, working, yeah. and that. And I, but that's a I always say what a program you are, who your head coach is, as you know. You know, right. you've been around, so and we are who C Base is. So who is he exactly? What do you think? Yeah, what do you expect? Hard, hard working. Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, you know, don't want to be outworked, you know, all open for new ideas and being creative because he's creative in his own mind. I think he's been an assistant for so long that now he he knows how it goes. You know, he has a, a good idea of how things go. So he's very creative and he and he and he lets us he, me, you know, he lets us, you know, have opinions, ideas. You know what I'm saying? You know, may not like him, but, you know, he, he's willing to listen to him and all of that. So we are who he is. I know it's hard to talk for him, but do you think his relationship with the players will change now that he's the head coach compared to before? Um, no, nah, well, I think that transition gonna be gonna be pretty good because I mean, you know, we, you know, he always had a pretty good firm grip with everybody anyway. So yeah. you know, so I think everybody understands and, and sees, you know, see him. They will have no problem seeing him in that light. 
You know what I'm saying? So I think it, that transition should be very good, very easy. How about you? Have things changed as far as really kind of being uh, the dean of assistant coaches now? You have the most experience of any of the assistant coaches in this uh, team. Right, right. <laughs> and that's crazy, right? But no, nah, I mean, it, it's been great. I mean, you know, I mean, we got a great group of kids, man. So, I mean, they, it's been great, man. You know, they, they listen. They, they try and do the right things, trying to do things the right way. And I, and I think at the end of the day, everybody ready to win. So with that being, you know, with that going on, that's, that's the most important. So everybody's really, you know, being a sponge. How do you see this team performing this year? You had a lot of changes. Michael yeah. Flowers, Brandon Johnson, they're not here anymore. Obviously, some players who graduated. What's it going to be like? Yeah, I mean, losing those two, of course, is, is big. You know, uh, with Mike and uh, Brandon, two good, really good kids, too. I mean, I have much yeah, respect to them because they were – they were uh yeah, they were great for me in my transition too, especially with Mike working with the guards, dealing with Mike. You know, we had a very good, very tight relationship from the from day one I got the job. But um even then Brandon was right there too, because they're best friends. So they knew two guys are great. But I think with this, with this, uh with this, you know, uh with this new group, first of all, I can tell just off paper alone, I think defensively we're gonna be very good. Yeah. You know, because we we have we have some very good pieces. We got guys that can, you know, that can that can fly around, we got some versatility and all of that. So I think we're gonna be very defensive. I know I can just tell you right now, defensive, that's the first thing that's gonna pick up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we should be pretty good. And and then you know, with that, you know, with now we gotta bank on like what we was talking about, guys been working, doing their thing. So like I'm all, I'm big on when you when you in this air, man, when you when you talking about uh a college kid, the biggest jump always from their freshman to sophomore year. Like when I was at Michigan State working out with Cassius and Miles Bridges and a lot, that I was on their your biggest jump, you know, like that after their freshman year, like you gotta make that jump. You know what I'm saying? Like, for example, give you an example, like a Western Michigan guy, Thomas Wilder, who I'm very cool with. I much respect for Thomas Wilder. He's been great too. The Thomas best. Wilder. Dealing with Tom, I mean Tom, Thomas Wilder went from seven points as a freshman to 18 points as a sophomore. Now, I'm not saying Mike, if we can make that type of junk, that's incredible. If Titus and Biardis can do that, that'd be great. Even Ralph B. Cruz. But it's like, just you need them to make that jump because that that says a lot about your career to me at that time. Bar none, no injuries and all that. Because I, I know for me at that time, I, I was battling injuries when I started my sophomore year at Michigan State. So like no hindrance, no things going on. I need them, we need them guys to make that freshman and sophomore year jump. And then, you know, things that go from there. CK, in this day and age where everybody wants to accomplish everything at once, yeah, yeah. with the transfer portal the way it is, you have a player coming in, he plays maybe seven or eight minutes his freshman year, doesn't realize that it's a process. He was the star in high school. What do you tell a player like that in this day and age that you might not get the results right off the bat that you want, but if you stick with it, you might. Right. Because I always, that's that's the same way I would say, <laughs> best lesson in life is living, right? Right. So the thing is, it's like, shoot, that's the same thing when you, you when you translate that over to, you know, I can tell you about it. You can tell them about man, the, the speed of the game, the physicality and all of that. But a lot of people, you know, they are, okay, okay, okay. But you got to experience that. And then when they experience that, you know, it's like, well, because you got to think about it. Like, okay, we was talking, going back to Michigan State, to the Cashes and Josh Lane for some, these guys that were all Americans or top 30 kids, they had to adjust to college basketball too. So I'm just saying it goes on at every level. You understand? So like I said, going to Thomas Wilder where, you know, I know he picked it up probably late his freshman year and all that, but it's like, you know, everybody got a learning curve, a learning period. You know, you, you're going to have to go. Because I'm like, so you come in and do that right away, so you're incredible, but yeah. you're going to have some learning. I mean, the speed of the game and physicality of college basketball, I feel it's going to be tough for any high school kid because we all, I dealt with it. I, I dealt, I mean, I run across Eric Snow as a freshman. I, I was like, man, what have I gotten myself into? Because this is not Grand Rapids Union basketball right here. Mm. I'm like, whoa. And so it was an adjustment for everybody. Yeah. What is the biggest adjustment for a freshman coming in, do you think? Yeah, like I said, the – off the court, when you talk about the, the structure, the classes, you know, where, you know, you may think you got some freedom, but you really don't got you have freedom. You know, right. ain't no first, second, third hour, fourth hour in high school. You know how that go. You know, everybody, you know, you may have two classes on this day, one class on this day, but you still got to, you know, 
learn how to schedule yourself, prioritize, you know, get some rest, eat right, eat better, things like that. You know, you got to, that, you know, those type of things right there on now on top of now, you know, now, now you watching film. Now, now we talking about basketball. Now, now we got practice hard. You know, you know, I know you was the man in high school, Aaron. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, <laughs> I know you're the man, but now, now we talking about, you know, everybody was the man and now you got to earn your keep. You know, now you got to grind. So you got to put the extra work in. So on top of that, extra work on top of your normal normal living, it's an adjustment, man. It's a huge adjustment. College basketball fans, you know, they tune into the game. They watch what's going on maybe twice a week or so. But behind the scenes, I don't think they have any idea. For you, no, TK, as an assistant coach, let's say there's no COVID going back to the last couple of years. As an assistant coach, what's the typical day for you like when you get up? And I mean, you get up, man. I mean, you get up. I mean, you get up early. You know, you add a whatever the agenda. Whatever How early? Not, huh? How early do you get up? Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm an early bird. I'm up six, six thirty. You know, I'm up six, six thirty, depending. And you know, seven at the latest. So I'm up and I'm up and at it early. So depending on what time of year it is, to a point where you up early. Okay, you you first thing you're looking at. Okay, do I got to make what rec what recruits or what? What players I gotta reach out to first? You know who, what's going on? Like you know, does Biardis? I gotta get on Biardis, make sure he's on top of his schoolwork, or you know, or, or this this recruit I gotta contact. You know, and then on top of you know, all right, say so watch film because I, I I watch film a lot. I watch it a whole lot. So now because you know, I love to watch basketball. So now then it's to the point where okay, uh, Ralph Cruz had a hard time in this game on this this such. I gotta make sure he gets in. The, you know, watch this film. You know, I got to make sure Mike or whoever else, you know, Jared Prenny, they got, you know, we got to do this on top of, okay, if it's my scout, I got to make sure that, we you know, I got to make sure, you know, I, I got the right things to present to the guys and make sure they understand what's going on, what's the game plan, what's the scheme. So it's just, it's just constant work, man. It's constant work. Cause this, this is not a normal nine to five job. It's not, it's yeah. not normal. I saw, you know, when you sign up for this, you, you, you signing up for something that's, you know, you, you got to really be about this life. Because it's not a nine to five job, yeah. how hard is it on your relationships, maybe with family or girlfriends or people like that? How tough is it? Oh, it is, it is tough. I mean, you really got to deal with somebody that, that really, you know what I'm saying? That's really uh, understanding, willing to, you know, understand your passion, understand the sacrifice you're making to, to, to get where you're trying to get in life, somebody that really supports you. And, you know, especially in my case, you know, like I said, the people that's in my corner, they've been understanding that since me, since I was a kid. They know basketball been been my life since I was a kid. Started playing when I was seven. So I, what I'm doing now, I'm living my dream right now because I knew this is what I wanted to do. So dealing with me, you knew this is what it was going to be about, dealing yeah. with me. Yeah. You, met, you mentioned before, TK, about scouts. For yes. people who don't know, what exactly does that entail and what do you have to do to scout a team coming up? You're talking about scouting a team. I mean, what you're talking about – Literally trying to break down a team, the, the strengths and weaknesses of a team, who you know where they like to go, what they like to do, what they run a lot of. You know what I'm saying? Who's the best player? Who's this? You know who's the shooters? Who's not? You know what I'm saying? You know at this, you know at this certain time of the game, what's their go-to plays? You know what I'm saying? This is so it's just like everything you gotta because you don't want to get you know you don't want to get hoodwinked. You know, joking around, yeah. but you know you don't want you want to make sure you're as prepared as possible. When you when you dealing with that with the team because you know players even me myself putting my player hat as a player you know you you know it's, it's tough you know they if they didn't know they didn't know and then that's my fault I feel bad about it if they didn't know because I didn't do a good job of cover you know covering everything like I should have you know what I'm saying and depending on the coaching staff two or three assistants scout out the team so you might have to scout out every two or three teams how exactly yeah. does that work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's basically rollover effect, like, especially last year. Like, see, based on myself, we flip-flop. So it's like, as soon as I'm I'm getting ready for, you know, say, we finna play Michigan State, I'm getting ready for Michigan State. As soon as Michigan State done, my next, okay, see, bases up next, I, I got us, even though I'm, I'm doing work on whoever, you know, learning my little, little, little things for that game, but I have to get ready for the next scout right after that. So I'm already on, you know, games on my computer. I'm, I'm already looking at them that night. You know, no, uh, you know, no hanging on to it. Moving on to the next. <laughs> and when we travel, there's plane flights, 
people sitting on the plane, bus yeah, trips. You, yeah, you're you always on it. your computer, so yeah, you know, you you're always it. doing something, right? Uh, yeah, <laughs> you see us uh, on the on the bus, on the computer. You know when you got when you over there sitting with that nice suit on, looking good. <laughs> you know I got to be over here on this computer, getting ready. You know, getting ready for the next big game. <laughs> and you always see players come up. The thing that strikes me is the relationship that you and Coach Bates and Coach Hawkins have with the players. Like at any time, you could walk back, grab a player, sit him next to you, break down some things on tape, and there was really a good give and take between. There was no egos at all. You're just trying to get better. Yeah, yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, like I said, when you're about this stuff, you're about this this life. It's like you know when a player understands that you're you're you really have their best interests at heart, you can get away with a lot of stuff like that. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So it's like, and I think with all of us, especially our new staff now, our, our players know that we got, you know, we have their best and we want their best interest for them. We want them to be the best player and people they can be. And, I, and I, I'm and i about that. I try to live like that. You know what I'm saying? I try to be consistent because you got to be consistent with these, with these young kids. Be consistent with everybody, even myself. But it's like you got to be consistent with them like that. So that's what I try to be. And, they, and yeah. so with that being said, they know, I, they know when, I, when I see someone or say something, they know where I'm coming from. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, we know where you're coming from. You're a fantastic player at Michigan State. Came from Grand Rapids Union you talked about before. <laughs> Michigan State, Tom Izzo recruited you. Judd Heathcote was actually the head coach at the time. What are the first impressions of Michigan State when you were a high school player? Uh, I thought it was cool because uh, they were one of the first bigger schools to offer me. You know what I'm saying? Because um, looking back, rest in peace, like Charlie Coleman of Central Michigan was like my first offer, you know, you know, you know but uh, – uh, Michigan State was my first Big Ten. And honestly, with Michigan State, my dad was a Magic Johnson fan, for example. And I remember, like, sixth grade, I took a trip with my school to to, to, to the Capitol, and we rolled by Michigan State. So it was like, you know, as, as a kid, you're like, man, you know. So it was like, uh, you know, and that was kind of sprung on to me early. And then, like, because my sixth grade coach, uh, he, he went to Michigan State. He was a police officer. He went to Michigan State. So it was like all of that's just in my head, you know, as a kid growing up. So then um, I remember uh, playing against Lansing Sexton, uh, actually playing against Sidey Washington. Uh, we, uh, my sophomore year, I remember I uh, had a pretty good game at Lansing Sexton. We beat him at their place. And Coach Izzo was, was at my high school the next day. And I just got the ball rolling. When I, when I got down to Michigan State as a kid, when you, know, you first get invited to a game, mm. you know, I'm like, man, you know, I'm like this, you know, Big Ten basketball. I was a Steve Smith fan too. I'm like, man, this is this is this is where I want to be. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the first time you ever met Tom Izzo and what it was like? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, we joke about it now because I remember uh, I was man, Aaron, man, it was crazy. I was because uh, uh, we played last like, Sex and Friday. I remember that Monday he was at my high school, so it was a little guy uh, standing in a suit by the drinking fountain, and so I'm talking to one of my teammates. You know, we laughing and joking, being. 14, 15 year old kids, you know, and I'm like, and I'm like, yeah, man, we having fun. So I kind of see coach, you know, he got his back to me, but I could see him laughing, his face turning red. Cause he knows, I don't know he, who he is. You know, I'm not, I don't know nothing about, I'm thinking like, who is this guy? I'm, I'm, I'm talking like, I don't even know he's there really, but I'm having a good time laughing, nothing crazy joking with my, one of my teammates. So my head coach at the time, recipes, Ernie Johnson, uh, he's a great guy, great man. Uh, he he uh, he blew the whistle and told us to come in, you know, come into the huddle. So he was like, uh, you know, you know, at that time, you know, everybody, Tom Tom is my nickname in Grand Rapids. So he was like, you know, Tom Tom, you know, I'm like, what's up? He's like, you know, uh, that's uh, associate head coach Tom Izzo over there. And I'm like, oh. So I turned to look at him. When I looked at him, coach just started laughing because, you know, I was just like, Oh, I was like, oh, hey, coach, how you doing? You know, and, that, and that's kind of where the ball took off. You know, it, it started right then and there. So that was the first time I really met Tom Izzo. What was yeah. it like the day you committed? Who did you call? What was it like then before social media to actually commit and not have people immediately know about it? I know. It, uh, well, I remember they uh, they made a home visit, and uh, him and Stan Joplin. And, uh, you know, when they came in, uh, I was at my grandmother's house. And I remember, you know, we, we just had a good talk. You know, the process has been going on because they offered me like uh, 
I think I offered me early, like the end of my sophomore year or something like that. So the process has been going on for a while. And, you know, I've been down there a lot. I've been going a lot. And it was just like, you know, uh, so I'm like, man, I'm just going to get this over with, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I just told him I'm coming. You know, my favorite number is number three is what I told him. <laughs> and, that, and the rest is history at my grandmother's house. Wow. Yeah. What, what was Judd Heathcote like? Uh, Judd was cool. Judd is actually comical. I mean, because he really, you know, I knew he was on this last year. And uh, he he saw me play at, uh, at the time, it was Converse ABCD camp. And uh, actually, Robert Trailer was my roommate. And uh, rest in peace, good dude to uh, Robert Trailer, But he was my roommate. So, uh, Robert, uh, so I remember Judd came and watched me play a lot then. And, I, you know, I was a little nervous at the time, you know, because I'm like, well, you know, because I, I knew – at the time, you know, bigger schools was coming, you know, they was recruiting me, all, but I, I always kind of knew I wanted to go to Michigan State. But I was like, you know, with Heathcote really watching me, I'm like, you know, let me, you know, do my thing. Cause I, but I knew Izzo was going to get the job also. But, of course, I wanted to impress Judd. Yeah. But I, we, we won. The, we ended up winning the whole thing. You know, uh, we had a pretty good team. And I was and I played pretty solid. So it, things was cool. So when I got to meet him, and Judd was – Judd is comical, man. It, Judd is funny. A lot of one-liners, a lot of, you know, quick on his feet, you know, you know, quick witty, quick witty, you know, he's very witty, smart. He was comical, man. Knew his basketball. I, I, I thought he was great, man. Judd was funny. What was Judd like between the lines during the game? Oh, yeah. Animated. You know, uh, he go, uh, not sugarcoat nothing. And I, I remember, um, uh, uh, I can tell you this now. I remember uh, I was a freshman. I just I played a couple minutes in the first half, and I was eating an orange, right? And so he's talking as I'm eating an orange, <laughs> and uh, you know, because they cut up orange ass, so I'm eating an orange, and and, I, and he was talking about me, but I'm not really. I'm a freshman. I'm not in my own world. And he come. He walked, and all of a sudden, I know it got quiet. He walks. I, I look up. He's standing right above me. And he snatches the orange out, <laughs> orange out my hand, and kind of threw, threw it right back in my chest. <laughs> like you, you fresh me. You need to listen to what I'm talking. And I'm like, hey, okay, I'm sorry, but yeah, that was that was funny though. No, it wasn't funny then, but when I look back on it, it's funny now. Did you ever see the Judd thud? I don't know if people know what we're talking about, but Judd, he used oh, to smack man. himself. Sometimes. And he does it hard. <laughs> hey, Aaron, hard man. Like he, yeah. it ain't. You know, hey. He did it hard. <laughs> I got to witness that for real. Wow. Yeah. But so Joe was great. You mentioned before you got there as a freshman, Eric Snow Sean was the point guard, er, and Eric Snow and Sean Resper. But did you have to go up against Eric every day in practice? Because yes. as yes. physically strong as he was, there were not many people as physically strong. His brother Percy was a star football player. Eric was a star football player. You couldn't make him go anywhere, could you? No, I am, man. It, it was it was crazy because I kind of knew, you know, like say <laughs> you're a recruit, you coming up, you playing open gym, it's okay. You know, you play hard, but, you know, they you know give you a little bit, you know. But once that whistle got real and once September hit and, you know, different from times like now where you get the summer, you know, to work with the guys and all that. You know, uh, we got to September and, and we got to uh, lifting weights at 6 in the morning and all of that. But I remember my first open gym, and I just, I mean, you got to really feel how strong he was. Like, yeah. his legs, his lower body, you know, him and Sean Rush, but too. And it was just like, man. So I remember first time in practice, I, I got I got, uh, I got Eric Snow with a good little crossover move one time. Man, I don't know why I did that, Aaron. It just, it, it went downhill after that. He didn't, he didn't know it's not a lot of fouls called in practice. So he got very physical with me, and I was only a buck 70. 170 pounds. So just just imagine that dealing with dealing with him. He was a defensive player of the year in the conference. Did that make you get better quickly to have oh, a guy yeah. like that mentoring you? Yeah, quickly. And it, and it wasn't even about as much as the words. It was just to able to watch. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm big on being consistent and all of that. Like they was consistent. At, they were pros, so they was acting like pros at that time. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, Sean Red, like the work ethic and all that, like they helped me. Like Sean Resper was great, took me back to Detroit with him. 
when I was a freshman, spent time with me, you know, let me stay at his parents' house with him, you know, the whole weekend. Like Sean Resper was great too. He really was great. I mean, he really was, cause I was the only incoming freshman at the time too, Aaron. So I ain't have nobody to bounce stuff mm. off of. Oh. So I had to take all of that myself. I was the only incoming recruit at that time. You know what I'm saying? So Sean took the time, they both took the time out with me. And, you know, like I said, just grown with me, talk to him, talk about the game, talk about life. Talk about the adjustments and all of that. You know, on top of that, because you got to think, Sean Resper was a lottery pick, number eighth pick, ninth pick, or something like that. So it was, it, it, it was great, man. It was great. You know, it was a grind at that time, but I look back on it like I, um, I actually, recently, it's funny you say that, during this pandemic, like early on, like April, I recently reached out to Sean just telling him, thank you. Thank you for everything. Wow. Yeah. How's he doing now? Uh, he's good. He's good, man. He was, he was with the Chicago Bulls for a while. I don't know where he was at now, but I know he's he's recently he was with the Chicago Bulls at the time, like doing player development, you know. So he he's been sticking around the NBA for a while since 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 he since his playing days. And Sean had to deal with a lot of things health wise that nobody had any idea he was dealing. Yeah, I mean, with. I didn't have a clue of what he was going through. I mean, that's why I said much respect for him with that. Yeah, no doubt. So you mentioned you came in as a freshman. You didn't have any other freshmen there. Yeah. What was, was it like game. socially just for you as a human being and not even as a basketball player? Oh, yeah. That's why I talk about the adjustments, you know, because what I did was um, I was, you know, I was lucky to have a lot of people from my area that was Grand Rapids that was attending Michigan State. So, like, doing Welcome Week and all of that, I, I was able to link up and find them because, like, we tell guys and what we tell them all the time, you know, and I didn't understand that when actually Eric Snow told me that because it was like, you know, you know, uh, appreciate these relationships because, you know, you, you're there for four or five years. Not too many times you're going to be sitting in a situation or one spot for this long like that. So, and that was a cool thing because I was able to, man, some of the friends I have to this day were from those times, you know, as a freshman, you know, able to uh, make, go somewhere and, you know, meet people and mix and mingle a little bit. So it was cool. It was cool at that time because they said it, it could have been tough for me. You know, but like I said, my my roommate at the time, he played lacrosse. He still, we still cool right to this day. Yeah. So yeah. it was a non basketball room. I mean, he played field hockey. I'm sorry. Yeah. So yeah, but you would yeah. think most people would have. Didn't most people have other basketball players as their roommates? Or is that yeah, you? yeah, yeah. Not me though. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so how did that go? Oh, it was cool because um, uh, he thought it was cool that I played basketball because you know just the fact that you know like uh, you know uh, me being on TV as a freshman or something, yeah. then I come back home in the dorm, you know, like, whoa, I just saw you. You know, he was cool, you know, yeah. he, he was cool about it. So, we, it, and it was cool for me because he was doing something different too. So I, he can take my mind off, off other yeah. things as well, you know. Well, TK, you talked about the adjustment that freshman year. You had some injuries you mentioned as well. Yeah. You said it was judged last year, Michigan State. First of all, at the end of that first year, Sean Respert, Eric Snow, very good team, had a chance to go a long way. I know a lot of Michigan State fans, there's two words they don't want to hear. Weber State. What was it like for you at the time? Oh, man. Well, for me, I just I just fractured my foot right before then. And so, you know, it's just like, you know, and I was just like, you know, because actually it was funny because when, you, when you're in a tournament like that, you kind of prep for, you know, you try to get ready for other teams and do a little prep for them. And because it's funny about it, we probably could have played Allen Iverson in Georgetown the following game, you know, but uh, Weber State, man. And when I wouldn't say we took them for granted, just the vibe I got as a young guy, it's just like, you know, uh, they had a guy, Ruben Nemhard, who had a great game. And as good as the defensive player Eric was, he had a lot of tough shots on Eric Snow. He's a guard. He's a combo guard, about 6'3". Man, oh, he made some tough shots, Aaron. And it was just, you know, we, ne we never could really get going. We couldn't really, you know, like Sean got, you know, he, sh he played okay, but he got going late. And, you know, Eric Snow fouled out that game at the end. It was just a lot of things just kind of didn't go our way, you know. What I mean? And, you know, it is, you know, that, that people don't understand them tournaments like that, them, them first game, them jitters and all of that, you know, that one and done time. That's a different animal. That's a yeah, different animal. You don't have time. You don't, don't have, have time. time to be nervous because if right. you do, it might be over. Yeah, exactly. And when you try to adjust, and by the time we adjusted, it, it was too late. So there's a lot of things going on at that point. The game's over. You're injured. All of a sudden, I'm sure you thought you guys would be there for a long time. All of a sudden, like a snap, 
Judd's career is over. Yep. Sean Respert is gone. Yep. Eric Snow is gone. Yep. Tom Izzo is an unknown, unproven <laughs> new head coach. Yep. You're the only player in your class. What was going on mentally in your mind at that time? Oh, it was tough. I mean, people don't understand because when you talk about that injury stuff, Aaron, man, like, um, for example, like I, I broke my foot, so I had surgery in March. Uh, with all that going on, trying to get right, um, trying to get active, it, it wasn't right. Hmm. Another surgery in June. So then I go on a, a, um, a Big Ten tour, like a kind of like a tour team, like an All Star college All Star team, uh, and doing actually doing okay. We traveled through Spain, then we flew up to Belgium, and we did all of that. Right before school started, and it was right before, it was like the end of August, like right before school started, fractured my foot again. So another surgery in September. So now I did all of that and then trying to get ready, you know, and like I said, with all the stuff that I'm dealing with that, now you got a coach like Tom Mezzo, who a first year coach, and you need this to going on it. And I'm your starting point guard at the time that is not 100% healthy. So I didn't have the preseason like I wanted to have because I was too busy trying to get healthy. So then it's like, once we, and then, and, and what we started off, Aaron, we started off going to Maui. Yeah, really classic. <laughs> yeah, Florida. so it was like, we got to go through all that then, because I, I didn't start the first, but my first start was against, I think, Steve Nash and Santa Clara. <sighs> yeah. So your freshman year, the first game ever, you're injured, still trying really to adjust, probably physically. Yeah, my sophomore year. Or your my sophomore, sophomore year, I meant. Yeah. Trying to adjust physically just to being healthy trying to get back to a new head coach here in Maui David Hart I think Anthony Mall we talked about this before yeah. one time we we're eating dinner those were the starting guards in your first ever game but you got to play against Santa Clara yeah. Tom Izzo do you remember anything about that time yeah I mean well because even with that being said with uh the first game we, we beat Shaman I which was tough because Shaman I played everybody tough yeah you know it's their home thing and and we were young and I remember it that was a great lesson for me because even now I started and I still played a lot, you know, I played starving minutes. So that game I played probably like 26, 28 minutes and I was in there down the stretch. And so it was a, that was a cool learning experience to get that and grow. And then, but then to turn around and play North Carolina, <laughs> young Vince Carter, they had Jeff McKinnis who was, you know, you know, was ended up being a pro, uh, Dante Calabria, they had a team. So that actually, no, that was my first start. Sorry. That was my first start, yep. And then, um, and that's where it was just like, wow. And then, like I said, well, then it rolled over to Steve Nash, who they ended up beating us by six. But even then, I always tell people he was one of the toughest people I played against in college because he basically, you know, he was a he was an upperclassman. Like, this is how you run this position, young fella. You know, this is how you do it. You know, he, he ran his team. You know, you know, heady, knocked down shots. He was he was a great player in college. Well, do you remember playing against Steve Nash? What do you remember him? Just kind of yeah. – because yeah. I don't think I know. the nation knew that much about him at the time, did they? No, I didn't. Well, you, you, you heard a little bit about him, but as time came when we got to go and get him out, it's like you started hearing a lot, like, dude, this dude can be a potential first-round pick. So – and the funny thing about it, not just him, his backcourt mate, Marlon Garnett, was in the NBA too. So they both was NBA – they both made it to the NBA. But it was just like, man, like – I know playing against him changed the speeds. He was shifty. I know I fouled him a heck of a lot. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, he, he was good, man. Very heady, man. I mean, I could anything I, I couldn't relax. Anything I did, he took advantage of. Anything I did wrong. What were those first days like with Coach Izzo, really trying to gain your identity? Oh, uh, I mean, oh, you talking about work. I mean, as far as, like, you know, the – the, the intensity of practices and all of that, you know, just, I mean, he, I mean, like you're talking about, like, he wouldn't sleep. He'd sleep in the office. He'd stay at the office. I mean, it was just a grind. I mean, he, the stuff we was trying to do to turn it around, I mean, he, he would run with us when we had to run, like, four miles in the morning. He would run with us. It was just constant work, man. I mean, from he, he was holding everybody accountable, from the janitors to everybody. Huh. So it was just like, man – you know, he, we had to we had to change a lot of things about ourselves. Tom Izzo, from the first day he took over, really from the first time you knew him as an assistant, has he changed over the years? Um, just got older. Ain't nothing changed. Personality-wise, <laughs> you know, uh, 
with the with the with the with the times and all of that. I mean, you you know, where I always thought we we had a a little bit more strict, you know, the practice hours, you know, he, you can't go as long and things like that. Cause back in my time, it would be nothing to have, you know, we, we had long hours of practice and all that. It's, it's tougher nowadays to do that with how things are and all of that. But I mean, all of that, I mean, his passion, his energy and all of that, man, it's still the same, man. He still don't like to lose. And he still, and it was crazy that he still, I mean, he cares so much by a fault. You know, he just, you know, he's, you know, he cares about his players and everybody programs so much, you know, he's, and he and he shows and that's how he show it all the time. So nothing really has changed, really. What type of a person is he? Not even basketball, but just as a human being. Oh, man. Uh, coaches. Coach is great, man. I mean, as far as when you talk about, um, I say one of the best for you, genuinely, like he literally want the best for you, you know, and that was and that's the, you know, you. As a kid, you kind of took that for granted. Like, I took that for granted. You know, ah, coach, you know, you know, whatever. But genuinely looking back on it, he's been very consistent with that with everybody and not just me. Yeah, you coach, of course, you can always bump heads with your head coach and all that. Nothing will never be perfect. You know what I'm saying? But to look at, you know, what he said, white basketball away, he genuinely cared for all of us. I mean, by a fault. Is you know he, he he's passionate about that and want you to really to do well in life. Yeah, that first year really it took you just a little while kind of to forge that identity. I th I think a lot of people who are kind of historians, so to speak, about Michigan State basketball, the first year they'll talk about Michigan State. Maybe the substitution patterns you didn't know where they would be. Then all of a sudden you guys went to the palace. You played Arkansas. You had 20-plus offensive rebounds. Was that kind of the catalyst to it? Yeah, I mean, because, I mean, it started then to where we were front court heavy. Jamie Fight playing the NBA for a while. Quinn Brooks yeah. with 16, 17 points. And I, Antonio Smith was my teammate. It was, like, it was like, that's where that war drill and stuff came from. It's like we were always doing the war drill. And it was just that ball go, it was just a pound and then a pound. And it was just like – and that's what it's like that year is like just throwing it on the rim and go get it. You know what I'm saying? And, and that's what it was about that and playing defense. You know, it's just, that was what it's about. That's why I was like, you know, you, you go to Michigan state, those are two things. Those are like two things that are non-negotiable playing deep rebounding and playing defense. And that's where it started. Then it started then during that time. So those were things that, Maybe not from day one you were emphasizing, but you kind of adjusted the way the game was going and saw what it took to win, and then you started emphasizing those Yeah, things. I mean, well, because at, being honest with you, at the time, I feel, in my opinion, like you talk about a school like Purdue, for example, with Gene Cady. Yeah. Gene Cady was tough. Mm -hmm. and, and Purdue at the time, when I was in school, beginning part, just funny how I go to the first half of my career, Purdue won like back-to-back -back Big Ten titles, Kwanzo Martin them. Cause I, I was like a freshman when they were seniors. Uh, they won it. Then, then my sophomore year, um, you know, they 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 had a collective group of guys and they won it again. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, but they were tough. You go to Purdue, they were tough. Yeah. They were pounding you. They had a bunch of six five, six six guys. My guy Justin Jennings, he's a good friend of mine. Grand Rap, Roy Harrison, another good friend of mine in Indiana right now. Um, they just was tough, and so it was like you know. And that's what Coach Izzo was about, you know, and Coach Izzo was a football guy, too. So you got to remember that, too. So it was just like taking a, I think, taking a page out of Purdue's book, too. That added with what we were trying to do also because how Purdue was just physically just beating you up. My sophomore year, man, we played there, Aaron, on CBS. I remember my sophomore year, ugly game. I mean, the game was like – because at the time, before we started having a tumbling – my sophomore year, we were us and them were both tied at six and two in the halfway point of the Big Ten, six or two or seven and two. Yeah. So we had to go to Purdue, and that game was so ugly on CBS. It probably was like a fifty-one forty-eight game. I mean, it was a grind. But that's where the stuff started. You know, identity stuff coming in. You know, taking a page out of Purdue's book as well. That first game at Purdue. That's what you're yes. talking about, right? Yeah. The first because we only played them one time that year. Yeah. And that was at the halfway point. Yeah. And it was rough. Right. Yeah. People look at Michigan State. They see all the blue chippers. They see the Final Four banners. They see the national title banner. Yeah. They think about Tom Izzo. He's in the Hall of Fame. Deservedly so. The first couple of years at Michigan State, 
They were tough times. TK, believe it or not, in the first two years at Michigan State, this is before social media, there are a lot of people out there, so-called fans, who obviously had no idea what they were talking about. No. They were upset with Coach Izzo. Yes. They wondered very, very vehemently whether or not he was the right replacement for Judd Izzo. They were not kind to Tom Izzo at the start. Is no. that true? Do you remember that? I, I lived it. <laughs> I literally lived that because people weren't kind with Thomas Kelly neither. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I mean, because you got to think, I, I was a young guy coming through injuries and all that. So it, it was a tough time for all of us. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's why it'd be funny because, like, I tell, I tell my players, I tell our players now, like, you know, don't talk, you know, when you talk about this kind of stuff, I've seen the NIT and I've seen the Final Four in my years of college. Right. So I've seen the goods, and I've seen the bad, and also seen the good of things. I've seen things develop. You know, seeing things change. You know, I've lived that. You know, people. So it's like, even with us at that time, you know, like you said, we was reluctant to change. We had we had talented team. We had some talented teams. Like I said, Jamie Fike and me, though. But honestly, at the time, I think we were, we didn't know how to win. You know, and what I was saying, and I'm saying that to say because guys were a little bit selfish about it. Wasn't no family atmosphere. A lot of guys didn't a lot of, you know, people were separate, you know, individual groups and all of that. And it, and it didn't, you know, and we we couldn't put it together like that. But it's like, you know, it's just funny how, like I said, during that time, coach is trying to implement things. And, you know, and it's just, and it's just, and like I said, the second half of my career, we was able to get that with the help of guys like Mateen Cleese, my roommate, Morris Peterson, oh. you know. So when that, when that, when that change started happening like that, and that's when things just really took off because er basically everybody bought in, Aaron. Then yeah. nobody really, because even with Coach Izzo, you, you feel bad because uh, you, you had upperclassmen on my team as, as a sophomore that they probably still looked at him as a assistant coach too. And I don't know that, but maybe this is, you know, so it was hard to get buy-in. And then with me being a sophomore that, you know, I, you know, being a point guard, like I've been trying to tell the artists, you know, a lot of our guys to be verbal because I lived it as a sophomore where it was tough to be that because, but on top of the injuries I had, I was a little insecure with myself because I wasn't right. really healthy. So a lot of that's going on too. So it's just, and then a lot of people was just, they was tough on coach early, you know, just, you know, because, you know, like I said, you know, uh, you know, we wasn't winning right now, like, you know, we, we, it, we didn't, pop right away you know what i'm saying and, and where people understand things take time you know what i'm saying so but so but once when, when things got going it took off but you were right the more their times was rough you mentioned before that people might not have been too kind to you what do you remember yeah. the things maybe people said to you or oh their yeah, behavior I, yeah. during a game toward you yeah i mean so you gotta think like um i remember my sophomore year because i played i played and I told you all the surgeries i had i played through through pain and injury, you know, through pain that whole year, really. Just, just you know, now it wasn't the smartest thing to do, but you're doing whatever you got to do to play because you just want to play. You know what I'm saying? I didn't want to sit out. But I remember at home against Michigan, we lost. I remember some of the home crowd booing me some. You know, they 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 you know they, they were on me tough about that. You know, didn't, you know, I, I check back in the game, you know, you hear the boos and all this, like, man, like, yo, like, you don't even understand, like, you're talking about behind the scenes, what I'm really dealing with as a player, you know what I'm saying? And, and I give Coach Izzo a lot of credit on that one because he stood up for me on that, you know, and I remember him, him standing up for me like that because I remember going to Wisconsin in the newspaper, they made a joke about, uh, they was like, uh, you know, when they was going through the starting lineups and all of that in the paper, and I remember reading it, uh, uh, the night before the day of, uh during pregame or something they was like uh i bet sophomore point guard thomas kelly probably get more cheers in it at wisconsin than what he do at home and you know uh -huh. it's a joke but you know how that go but this is how you know this is how times were now because i know if that was social media was out back then oh i know i really would have got it you know what i'm yeah. saying so it was a tough time i don't you know, wish that on nobody yeah yeah you talked about all your injuries. Yeah. Was there at any point, and we haven't even talked about the year you had to sit out in 98, right? Yeah. Yeah. Was there at any point where you thought, I might not make it. I might have to quit basketball. Was it yeah, that uh, bad? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, even during that time, like you talking about sophomore year, like I'm starting or, you know, playing significant minutes for a Big Ten team. And, you know, it's just like, 
you know, you'll come home sometimes. He's just like in them dorms, just like, man, like, this is, man, what did I sign up for? You know, and I, cause I, I mean, like, I never thought my foot would stop hurting. And, you know, it was just like, man, I, but what really got me was that 98 year because I've been a point guard my whole life, but at the time, you know, playing with Mateen Cleese, I had to learn how to adjust to play off the ball for a couple of years. And even in Europe, you know, I've been a point guard my whole life, but them two years with Mateen Cleese, I had to learn how to play with him, you know, to especially get more minutes on the floor, which with me and him, our relationship even got more tighter because we pushed each other and it was, it was just great. But it was just like one, once we got going, because me and him had a heck of a summer. We worked out, me and him, more, so we worked out so much that summer. And then I knew things was going well. And like the first exhibition game, I scored 20 points. We, we, we doing this, we doing that. And the next day in practice, I break my foot on Charlie Bell's uh, foot in practice. I stepped on oh, his foot. Man. So that, so I played my junior year. Now, you know, I, that was probably one of my better years stat wise, because I wasn't as hurt. But then I come back my senior year. And all the work I put in, you know, then this happened. Like, that was the year where it really, really, really hurt. You know what I'm saying? That that really bothered me because that was the year that I really was just like, man, you know, all this work I put in. And I know, I, you know, what I was, you know, projected to lead the team in scoring and all this stuff was supposed to happen. And boom, I'm done for the year. I mean, that was – that took, and I was really out for – with that injury – Cause it was a little, I had to get some uh, bone grafting from my hip. That really took like seven, eight months to really get right. So yeah, that was a, that was a grind. That was a grind. So you got, you're injured. You guys win the big 10 in 1998. Yeah. You have to watch. I got to watch. Obviously you love it. It's your team. Yeah. It's a great thing, but yeah. was it kind of bittersweet just not being able to participate? Man, to any competitor, of course, very, very, you know, it it was, it was tough. I mean, but also, you know, you know, that's where I give my teammates, like say Mateen Clay, you know, it, you know, having a co a player coach team at that time where those guys kept me involved, even when I wasn't trying to be, you know, like, you know, Roach, I really wasn't trying to hang out or really trying to they kept me involved, you know, because they knew they knew the work I put in. They knew what kind of player I potentially could have been and all of that. And much respect to them. That that sacrifice like that with me, you know what I'm saying? It stuck with me. So that was that was big for me on that one, you know what I'm saying? And on top of coaches or being high it was, they didn't they didn't let me uh, sulk like that. Like I think of more every because when I think about that, I always think about my man, uh, you know, Squeaky, you know, because he's going through that. So quite as well, because you know, because I think about him often. I may always check on him, you know, just to make sure he's okay. Cause I know I and I, I I I've had it worse than him, you know. But I just even just trying to check on because mentally that can be draining and I that can be discouraging. Yeah. 1999 came. Yeah. Yeah. It's your time for your senior year. You're yeah. finally healthy, able to do it. Yeah. What are your thoughts going into that year? I mean, well, that year just as far as like you know, um, wanting to. Uh, it took a you know when basketball so much of a rhythm game. It was like you know, I offensively I didn't really have my rhythm like I had that year prior because I knew ninety seven ninety eight was going to be my time. You know it was going to be a good year for me. But at the beginning you know, that whole year was just about trying to get like I said trying to get my offensive rhythm back because I didn't start playing until like July August of that summer going into ninety going into ninety eight. So I I said I've been I was out for a while, but I knew, you know, getting stronger and all that, but I knew, like I said, one, how you going to get on the floor at Michigan State, you better be able to play defense. Mm -hmm. So even though I probably couldn't do what I wanted to do offensively at the time, defensively I knew I was, you know, I was going to bring something to the table. And with that team and what we were on, like we knew then. That's why I tell my guys, I literally try to tell our players, I live that, Aaron, man, when you talk about like, uh, you know, um, uh, seeing a team, like it just don't start overnight. Like, we knew, we knew in the summer how good we were going to be. Like we knew, even, even like I said, going into 97, 98 before I got hurt, like we knew we were going to be good because it was our time. We knew the, the sacrifice, the grind we put in, how we believed in each other. Skip what, the co what Coach Izzo was talking about. We knew we believed in each other. So that's why I try to tell our guys, like, you know, like the buy-in starts now. It don't start when November comes. You know what I'm saying? So 
that's why I, you know, because I literally lived that. And once we, once we did that, that's why things took off the way. Because I knew, we knew we were going to be good. Like, even the year I left, Aaron, I'm not trying to speed it up, but it's just like, I knew they were going to win a national championship because yeah. I knew the work we, it, it was, it was there. You know, we just had to go get it. It was right there. Like, we knew, and, and even in 99, like, all we talked about was going to the Final Four. Because even then, we probably could have pushed it then, but we was just trying to, all we kept just talking about the Final Four because we got to the Sweet 16 in 98. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, you know, we just taking steps. But we knew we were good, man. We we knew then, we we knew when we approached games, like, we knew whoever we played, like, we knew we were good. Right. And so I'm trying to get our guys to be on that right there because I lived that. You talk about walking the walk, talking the talk. People yeah. only talk about that 99 team, Martin Cleaves, Charlie Bell, Antonio Smith, Andre Hudson, Jason Klein, A.J. Granger. People who know basketball, TK, and this is absolutely true, and your Western Michigan fans need to know, is people who know basketball talk about an unsung hero being Thomas Kelly. Because, listen, you had your ego. We yeah. talked – you. A year before you were injured, you would have had huge numbers. You had to put aside your ego for the sake of the team. You yes. could have been selfish. Yes. You could have been looking for numbers. You yes. knew what it took to win. They would not have gone to that Final Four without Thomas Kelly. Right, right. What do you say to those people? We, so first of all, that's, that's great to hear. I mean, that's, that's unbelievable. But it's funny you say that because that's what the whole team was about, though. You know what I'm saying? That's literally what it was all about because, you know, like I said, when I was hurt, they made sure I was I was okay. I was a part of it. So once I got right, I might like, skip that. I mean, I, I got to give this back to them because the core of me has never been a selfish person anyway. I've always been about winning since I was young. So it's like, you know, the core of me, you know, I was like, man, I'm, I'm being selfish to the point where because I'm letting injuries consume me. I mean, honestly, Aaron, them injuries was consuming me, man. So it's just like, man, I can't be that way. And I knew, I knew then that we were going to be special. So it was like, I got to bring something to the table. Everybody had to bring something to the table. Morris Peterson, A.J. Granger. Because I, I remember even Dick Vitale, you know, he was great with us because I remember we came into a game one time. We all checked into a game and Dick Vitale was like, you know, A.J. Granger, Thomas Kelly, Moore, we could have been starters at other programs. Mm -hmm. But Morris Peterson, our leading scorer, 13, came off the bench. Right. So it's just everybody just, you know, we really put the, the front of the jersey literally in front, you know, the front of the jersey. That's what really mattered because we knew then. And our saying was, if we win, everybody eat. That was always our saying. And that's what we do. That's what we talk about. Even right to this day, those are things we try to, even as a group, I, we live by that. And that's yeah. what it was. So it's like, man, I had to, I had to really like, hold up, you know, everybody check your egos at the door and understand what sacrifice it means. And these are literally our things I try to implement to our players, our Western Michigan, my players. You talked earlier in the podcast about being a vocal leader, some guys, mm -hmm. my team, Cleves, Antonio Smith, what were they like as leaders? What do you remember some things that they did? I remember everything. I mean, because, you know, should we still talk? I mean, Mateen spoke to our guys not too long ago. Yeah. I mean, literally, I mean, you know, and he one of my – I mean, that's my – guys, like my brother. He's a brother. That's that's how we are. I mean, because we are, we are our own fraternity at the Michigan State stuff. But it's just like hearing him talk is like I always, always listen to, you know, hearing him talk because the passion he talk – what he talk with, you know, that's what he's about. So it's just like, you know – it's the same when we were in college, you know, because when we, like you said, I remember he first said that we was in a car, me, him, and Jason Klein, and that first hand came in. He was like, man, we win, everybody eat. That's what we, we said that Jason Klein car going to McDonald's in a, in a, in a drive through line. And that's where, it, I mean, that's where I remember it came from. I remember him saying that. And I just kind of, we took that and ran with it. But that was my because my team was about, everybody was about winning, Aaron. Everybody was about winning. Everybody was about sacrificing and winning. And when I look back on it, to, to your point, when I look back on it, we talk about captains, it's just like, because we all were, me, Jason Klein, uh, with, with Mateen, Antonio, Jason Klein, myself, we all were captains my senior year. And it was just like, you know, and we all, even then, we all brung something different to the, as, as captains then. You know what I'm saying? Because I can talk about what I've been through, injuries, life, 
Mateen this way, Antonio was this way, Jason Klein was, so we all had, you know, we all brought something to the table, but the thing what people understand is, I always say when we win, everybody eat, okay, even with myself, like, even though, no, I didn't play in the NBA, you had a couple NBA trials, it was cool, but I, I, I was able to be a pro, so you got to think about it with myself, Charlie Bell, NBA, Morris Peterson, NBA, Mateen, NBA, Antonio Smith, Europe, uh, Andre Hudson, Europe, uh, Jason Klein, Europe, AJ Granger, Europe, David Thomas, Europe. Right. You know, um, uh, Mike Chappelle, even though he transferred, he was our teammate. He was a heck of a practice player at the time. <laughs> he played in Europe. Uh, my man, DeWine Wiley. Like, we had, so yeah, I think I played with like on that team off that 98, 99 team, I played with like nine or 10 pros, whether Europe or NBA. So, like I said, when you win, everybody eat. That comes from winning. Everybody want to be associated with winning. NCAA tournament, I, you said before, you knew you were going to get to the Final Four. At least that was your goal. That's goal, yeah. You played Kentucky. You had to play Ole Miss. You had some tough games to get up there. But yeah. then you played Kentucky. Your dreams to get to that Final Four, people probably don't remember. You guys were down 17-4 to four in that yeah. game. Do you yeah. remember anything early about that game coming back? Yeah, yeah. Well, first, skip Kentucky. It was Ole Miss first. Yeah, Ole Miss was tough. Ole Miss was rough. I mean, because it's funny because I played against the guy, Jason Smith, uh, and we was in Europe against him. We played each other in a preseason tournament, and we started laughing, you know, because it was like, you know, we, we had some history. And they gave us a good go because I remember as confident as we were, the halftime locker room of that game, you could hear a pin drop. Because yeah. I'm like, man, these dudes, Keith Carter, he's the AD of the school now, actually, I heard. Uh, but it's like – them dudes, was, they came to play, and we we literally needed our bench. We needed everything, you know, to go for that game. The team hit some timely baskets, and that game that was a that was a another like a a wake up call in its right in its own right too. Because it's like, hold up now, like we gotta, you know, we we good, but you know this that could have went the other way for a minute, and you know, and that and that carried over because then like you talking about the Kentucky game. I remember I, I hit the shot to get the get the run going. I was like, but I hit, but I remember I hit the shot. And um I remember uh, after that, we just knew we weren't gonna quit. Like we you know, cause we knew what we were about. And we wasn't, you know, I, you know, even though we were down, uh, we knew we wasn't you knew we wasn't it, it wasn't we wasn't gonna stop at all. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, it was, you know, we, we knew what, what we were about. And like I said, going to that old miss game, it was easy to to piggyback that after that Ole Miss game. So that was great. Played Oklahoma, too. People always remember the collision my team had with Eduardo Nahara, and all of a sudden your team leader's down. It was probably 10, 15 minutes, wasn't it, TK? These guys yeah. are, and they're down on the floor, didn't know if they could play or not. Yeah, yeah, oh, they smacked. I mean, they, they, yeah, that was, that was kind of – oh, that was ugly, actually. I remember seeing witness and that and all of that. That was tough. But it's like I said, the one thing – and I know Coach Bates was on that, too – you know, when, when you talk about having like four or five, you know, four people in double figures. And I'm saying that, I'm saying I have to say relating it is that we can go nine or 10 deep. Like we were deep, you know, and that matters. That's one thing. I mean, you, Michigan State, you ain't, you scouting them, they're deep. And we knew, of course, with Mateen going out, you know, glad he came back because like, you know, we got guys that can, you know, just to fill in, you know, because we, we were a deep team. We were good. We were deep. I mean, and that, and that, and those times we we needed that 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 depth then you know that that bench it mattered then all of us mattered then me Doug Davis you know uh, AJ everybody it mattered at that time we got to step up so you know our bench we we were tough we were deep. You still have time? We've been going for over an hour. Do you want to keep talking or? Ah, uh, we can we can wrap it up. Yeah, I don't want to keep going. We can. <laughs> you, do you, you have to go because I'll keep talking if you want. Uh, to. no, we can, yeah we can get ready to wrap it up. Okay, well, I want to ask you about – we talked about all the injuries. Okay. But yeah. then you have 15 years of pro ball. All of a sudden you got healthy. You talked about before that you thought, well, maybe I have to quit basketball. You had a fantastic pro career. What was that like? Yeah, I mean, well, I knew um, – because going back when you talk about injuries too, like even my senior year of high school, it started then. Like 11th, 10th, 11th game, my senior year of high school, I tore my meniscus. I'm at like 28, eight assists, you know, I'm, I'm doing my, and doing a good job. And it started then going into college and then, uh, then the foot. So like my, so you got include my senior year, you got to think like four out of like, like 
uh, four, five out of the six years, I basically was battling some type of injuries or something. So I knew at the end of that, man, once I started getting healthy, Aaron, I knew I had a lot of basketball left in me. Mm-hmm. I knew I did. It was my passion. I knew I did. Yeah, I graduated and all that was cool. I was like, man, I knew I had a lot of basketball left in me. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a go. You know, I'm going to give it a go. And then once I – and it, which was cool, once I really got the plan my first year in Den Bosch uh, in Amsterdam, I played with one of my good friends, Desmond Ferguson, who, who runs the Moneyball Clothing. He played at University of Detroit. And Sam Benson was my head coach that played at Michigan State. Wow. So it was cool to have that as my first real year like that. And, you know, and Sam, being an NBA guy, and I remember – and I give him credit, and, and my guy Desmond. So what we was doing was we were hungry about it, so – we will play hard, practice hard and all that, but we will always put extra time in. And Sam put a lot of extra time in with me. So it's like, those were, that was a crucial year for me. So like I said, once I, we did a good job there, and then I, I said, once I did that right there, I knew I, it, it was gonna be, it, it was, things was gonna be pretty good for me. Then I said, then I went to Israel after that, you know, cause Sam really took the time out. He's like, man, you're, you're going to have to, you know, I'm, I'm going to see that you double your money. I'm going to see that you do this. You, you know, Sam put a lot of time in me, you know, with that. And I was, like I said, I was fortunate. And then I have my guy Desmond Ferguson who had the same type of approach I did. So we, 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 we was just working hard every day. And he it, and it just took it around when I was able to stay healthy. So I guess staying healthy was just my main focus. <laughs> but, it was, but I knew once I got healthy, man, I had a lot of basketball left in me. And I didn't want to give it up like that. What yeah, was I didn't life? want to go out like that, you know. What was life like living overseas, being a professional basketball player, not necessarily speaking the language anywhere you went? What, what was the experience like in general? Um, oh, man, it was – so for me, I was fortunate to go to some pretty solid places, some okay places, uh, okay environments. You know, like, um, like I say, I went from Amsterdam to – I played two years in Israel, you know, which was – you know, despite what people thought Israel was great. I was a little scared at first of all the stuff they put on scene. Because, you know, I think social media still wasn't on like that because mm-hmm. the tough part was I still would have to go to a pay phone and call my mom back home with the calling cards and all of that. You oh, know yeah. what I'm saying? So, you know, the internet really wasn't. You could send email. Emails started really happening like my last couple years of college. So that that was okay. But but uh, I knew Israel was great. Then uh, getting the uh, – the only problem you know, I remember Istanbul with the war, the war stuff happened. You know that was a little shaky for me. But other than that, man, I was I was I was blessed to go to some pretty good places, man, some solid places. You know, and you know, and like I said, was and and I continued and as a basketball player, I continued to get better though, and I continued to, you yeah. know, that work ethic from Michigan State and all of that. You know, and what was in me, I just kept working, man. Just kept working, kept improving. What were the fans like and? In- what was really their attitude toward the American players? Early on, when you know what, it was always great. Like I, I, I tell our guys, like you know, same thing there because you know, um, the first half of my career, like beginning of my career, it still was kind of a language barrier. It's not like it is now. Like everybody can pretty much speak English now. Mm-hmm. But like the first beginning parts of my career, and you know, it's just like you know, it was that was a little tough, a little bit, but the way the kids were, man. Kids was always great. You know, it was always, you know, and basketball was just so much of a universal language too. And it, kids gravitated to it. And, you know, and 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 it could be tough on Americans. Like I always tell Americans, you know, like, you know, don't go over there, you know, and be productive because you, your production matters. Numbers matter and things like that, you know, but, you know, but also get to know where you are. You know, don't don't be typical to where, you know, get to learn a culture. Like, especially when I got to uh, Hungary and I, I did a bulk of my time here. I won a couple of championships there. I was able to really get to know the, the it, it made it easier to play because I got to know the people, the culture. You know, you know, I knew my surroundings. And the fun thing is everybody accepted me too. But I had to open up too. I can't, I wasn't, you know, you know, just in the beginning part of my career, Aaron, man, I just go practice at home, practice at home. Yeah. Because I was grinding. But as I gotten older, I was like, man, let me start enjoying it a little bit. Travel some with them when I, if I could. You know, it, it'd be tough to travel doing it because people don't understand, you know, you still got to, I got a job. I'm here to do a job. But when I got some free time, I started traveling, you know, driving around, especially in Hong Kong, going to Budapest, going to, you know, like I said, when I was in Istanbul, going around a little bit, you know. So I was, you know, and, and that made it easier to play, you know, once I started adjusting to the culture and the environment around me. 
how did it form you just as a human being, all that travel and all those different ex experiences and people you saw and places you saw, just as a human being, how did that change you, TK? Oh, uh, man, it's humbling, to be honest. I mean, they like said, you know, uh, just, you know, to understand how, you know, how fortunate people are, how fortunate everybody is. And But I said, it's humbling in a lot of ways because, you know, I mean, you know, the, the options you have, the opportunities you have and all of that. So it's like, you know, I've never, they like said, take none of that for granted. And you know, when you over there like that, you know, it, you know, little things like, you know, there's no, um, you know, you can go to Denny's 24 hours or something like that. No, it ain't like that in Europe. I'm just yeah. as small as that is, you know what I'm saying? But it's just like the, the whole, you know, just like I said, the appreciation of where I came from and where I'm, you know, where I'm at and, and I'm, I'm not looking down on anybody, I never have. So it's like, you know, just, you know, just to, you know, like I said, let them know that, you know, I'm not some uh, arrogant American or, you know, thinking I'm better than somebody, you know, I want to get to know you or your culture and everything about you guys too. So it's just like, it's, it was very humbling, man. It's humbling. Do you have time for one more question? Yeah. yeah, yeah. COVID. Yes. You talked about before, just yeah. how mentally hard it is for some people. Yeah. Have you experienced anxiety, panic, worry about relatives, worry about people you love? Just what has it been like mentally for you just as a human being and not as a basketball player right now? Uh, yeah, it, it, yeah. I mean, like you said, uh, you know, <laughs> learn to appreciate, you know, appreciate people, first of all. You know what I'm saying? In this situation, you know, my parents, you know, um, my aunts, my family, everybody, you know, uncles, you know, just made me learn to appreciate people because, you know, with this type of stuff going on, this is scary, to be honest with you. This is scary to me, you know, because, you know, no vaccine, you don't know, it can affect people differently. You don't know what the underlying causes are, why, you know, what people are going through. So it's just, it's humbling. It's scary, but humbling. So, yeah, it's always like, you know, and me being high, you know, you know I always try to make sure everybody's good. So it's like, you know, just trying to make sure stay in contact with people the best I can, you yeah. know, or, you know, especially, you know, my circle that, you know, you know, people that I really love that really supported me. So I got to, I, I want to make sure everybody's okay and healthy. Like I said, man, this is scary though. It really yeah. is. This really podcast is. is called Beyond Sports. I always want to talk about things that you might not see right on the court, but for me, there's a lot of anxiety. I'll wake up at night having sleeping problems and you're worried about your relatives. You're worried about people you love. Yeah. This is a tough time for people right now, TK. Yeah, it is, man. It is, man. <laughs> and that's what I'm saying. Like you're talking about, you're like, it makes you value a lot of things, man. You know, put things in perspective. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, man, shoot, I, you know, man, we, we better try to enjoy the people, enjoy the time for right now. You know, whatever message is trying to uh, show or prove it is, 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 is doing that right now <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's scary time man scary time and reach out to people there are people who probably on the surface they look fine but they might not be if they're anybody yeah, exactly. you're worried about reach out to them no doubt man no doubt man because uh, you know i got a family member going through it right now you know what i'm saying so it's like you know just making sure she's okay and stuff like that you know this this thing is like that man like because you, you just don't know it's tough man it, it's a tough time scary time so I appreciate everything. I appreciate everything about this, man. <laughs> yeah. TK, I could talk to you all day. Can you come back maybe for a second time? I really, really enjoyed come it. On, Seriously, man. we didn't talk about your childhood. There's every so many more people at Michigan State we can talk about. You man. talked about the depth at Michigan State. You mentioned David Thomas. You mentioned Mike Chappelle. They redshirted in 99. They didn't even play. Exactly. I mean, we could talk for 10 hours about all this stuff. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> I'm telling you. I mean, you just don't understand. People don't understand, like I said, the, the teammates, I had a team I had when things got going. Like, man, we we were good, man. And so you can only imagine how them practices used to be, Aaron, man. Yeah. You're talking about competitive, competitive, man. You know, so, and that's why it's like, you know, people don't understand we talking about, you know, we literally lived the fact that uh, uh, games was easier than practice. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Games were easier than practice, to be honest with you. And that's why I, I, I hope we, we should be getting on that soon, that the games should be easier than practice. You know what I'm saying? Pushing Because we literally pushed each other like that. I mean, I mean, every day you, you line up and, and you got a 6'9", Mike Chappelle, that you guard on the perimeter like that. that. People forget that Mike Chappelle started at Duke. 
You know, he he was he was good. David Thomas, the same thing, six seven. It's like man. Then Morris Peterson, he competing every day. Charlie Bell competing every day. Yeah. Mateen, and you can't forget Mateen. Then you okay. got to run around. Is you 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 want to act? You want to? And then funny thing, Aaron, you want to run around and think stuff is all good. Antonio Smith ready to smack you in the head with a screen or something. Oh my wow. goodness, it, it it was tough, man. Tough every day, literally, and we pushed it every day. You mentioned Chappelle. He hit a gigantic three-pointer in that national championship game. TK, yeah. one year later after you were gone, it was in 2000. Where were you during that national championship game? In Europe. I was in Europe. Did you get a chance to watch it? Or was yeah, it, it was so probably I about four in the morning? All, I it? stayed up all night to watch that, man. No doubt. Yeah. I made a point. I'm going to stay up more. Uh, try to call. Uh, I don't know if I was trying to call more. I couldn't. I was trying out there. I may try to call him the next day or something. But, yeah, I stayed up all night and watched that. Even and the year later in 01 when they went to the Final Four, I stayed up and watched that too, you know, all, all, all the time. Three Final Fours in a row. Yes. Yeah. TK, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure being the first ever guest on Beyond Sports. And again, well, if you have some time later, we can plenty of other things to talk about. We can do a part two. Yeah, man, anytime, man. You good? You my man, man. And yeah. uh, hey, keep keep them suits clean, man. <laughs> oh, I will. I've got them ready, ready to go to the dry cleaner. Anytime they want to call, I'm ready. All right, man. Yeah, I miss right. you guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, Appreciate you too, it. man. Thanks a lot, man. Take, Take care. care. Bye. All right, now. Yeah.